Hi, my name is Kim Van Sommeren, Instructional Technician in Printmaking, Painting and Drawing at the University of Washington School of Art, Art History and Design. One of the most commonly asked questions that I receive by graduating painters is how to set up a painting studio at home. Once students depart the luxurious University of Washington studios, equipped with high ceilings, forced air ventilation, flammable cabinets, and canvas storage, many find themselves too overwhelmed to work, or more commonly, find themselves working in unsafe conditions. The purpose of this video is to bring to light a short list of safety concerns and resolutions when setting up and working in a painting and drawing studio. I will go over a brief materials comparison, studio setup, proper and safe storage, PPE and ventilation objectives, and cleanup and disposal options. The smooth linseed oil that is the vehicle in oil-based paint is slow drying, therefore allowing for more working time and ease of mixing paint colors and mediums. Oil-based paints are known for their high pigment quality and quantity. Many oil-based paint producers have an extensive library of classical, modern, and mineral-based colors. Of course, this has to do with the pigments that are available to us, a harsh comparison to what was available pre-manufacturing times. Contemporary research in paint manufacturing includes oil absorption, pigment density and volume concentration, and understanding the accurate crystal structure of pigments. Through this research, oil paints have the perfect properties to be blended smoothly, as well as abstaining any immediate color shifts over time unless painted in uneven layers where paint sinks into the canvas. Oil-based paints can also be painted over acrylic-based paints, exhibiting the fat over lean principle. This principle means that paint layers with more oil should go over top the layers with less oil. Oily fat layers require more drying time than lean layers. This concept affects the flexibility and presence of cracking within a painted image. Lastly, oil-based paints can also be used with low odor solvents as opposed to more toxic solvents of the past. Some of the cons of using oil-based paint include a slow drying time, although this depends on pigments. In addition to this, drying mediums such as cobalt dryer, galkids, and liquin have associated hazards such as high flammability and raised levels of volatile organic compounds. Oil-based paint also requires PPE and adequate ventilation with the use of cleanup and working mediums. In addition, rags and crumpled surfaces containing linseed oil and oil-based paint can quickly cause spontaneous combustion. The paint structure of oil-based paint also presents challenges with producing smooth, hard edges, mixing clean, bright colors, the yellowing of paint through oxidation of certain drying oils, and cracking over time. In addition, traditional oil paint brushes and paint are typically more expensive than acrylic or watercolor brushes and paint, and unused paint can separate in tubes over years. One of the biggest incentives of working with acrylic-based paint is its fast drying time. In addition, acrylic-based paints are water-soluble and therefore can be cleaned up and thinned with water. The acrylic-based paint structure allows one to mix clean, bright colors easily, as well as achieve a more crisp edge with brush strokes. Although acrylics are man-made from an acrylic resin, binder, and pigment, they have excellent light-fast qualities and will not fade or yellow over time. They are applicable to a variety of surfaces, including but not limited to canvas, wood, paper, glass, metal, and stone. The cons of using acrylics are few, but all still carry valid points. 
As some may view the fast drying time of paint a benefit, many artists see this as an ever-present obstacle that it dries too fast to work into. With this, acrylic paint on brushes requires attentive brush cleaning when brushes are not in use. Dried acrylic paint binder is nearly impossible to remove from brushes. In addition, the paint structure of acrylic paint presents difficulties producing smooth blends, especially without the assistance of an added blending medium. Acrylic paint can change color over time. The binder used in acrylics is typically white but dries clear. This means it seems lighter on the surface when it is first applied, but then dries darker as the white binder turns clear. The pros of using watercolor are fairly extensive and perhaps a bit obvious. Watercolor paints not only allow for a fast drying time, but also allow one to easily mix clean, bright colors. They are water soluble, which allows the paint to be cleaned up and thinned with water, and also do not have any odor. Watercolor paints are extremely light fast and are typically made by working light to dark by building up layers of translucent color, color that remains translucent with water. Lastly, one of the great things about watercolor is its transportability. Watercolors can easily be taken outside and worked with wherever one needs to be. The unfortunate challenges of working with watercolor paints are, but not limited to, their fast drying time, the inability to cover up mistakes due to the lack of opacity of the paint, limitations to using specific watercolor paper as a surface, and lastly, if not stored under proper lighting conditions, watercolor paintings will fade quickly. Most artists are not fortunate to have a professional studio in the early or even late phase of their careers. Many artists form makeshift studios within the corners, kitchens, garages, or outdoor spaces of their homes. When doing so, there are a number of bullet points that should not be overlooked as safety in a workspace of any kind is important. Work if possible away from eating and sleeping spaces. Your skin and your lungs are the most vulnerable organs when working with toxic materials. If you have to work in a bedroom or kitchen space, do not work on a bed or eating surface. Rather, work on the floor. Wherever you find space to work, consider laying down painter's plastic, garbage bags, or cardboard to contain the materials and spills. Perhaps make this barrier portable in the event that you need to relocate your workspace frequently. If you are working on a wall, surface, or easel, consider placing the above items behind and below the work to contain drips and any particulates that may fall. If you do not have an easel, consider mounting your canvas to the wall with heavy-duty 3M command hooks instead of nails that may damage a wall surface. If you are working with oils and solvents, work in the largest possible spa space you can find. Small confined spaces without windows create the most toxic work environments as air is not able to circulate and exchange properly. We will discuss ventilation ideals later. Lastly, purchase separate storage containers for art materials. In other words, do not use items from your kitchen for art and later reuse them for food. Fires and electrical shock may also be caused by overloaded electrical circuits, extension cords, power strips, or tools that are not properly grounded. Purchase tools that are double insulated. When an extension cord must be used, purchase the type with a GFCI built into it. If your electrical circuit breaker trips, reduce the load and reset it once. If the circuit trips again, obtain the assistance of an electrician. The circuit may have a short that could lead to a fire. 
Also, avoid using space heaters, hair dryers, stovetop burners, or any other heat or spark generating devices. With the sheer number of available art materials on the market, there is no perfect solution to proper storage of everything. In my studio, I need to have certain things at arm's length. Other things I only need once a day. Some items need to be kept sharp, and other items are liquid and need to be kept with a lid on. Some items need to be kept cold, and other items are required to be kept away from heat. Here are a few storage suggestions and solutions for working at home. Start saving boxes. Boxes that are not completely airtight or taped completely shut can be a solution for storing flat, wet items. You may also want to consider building a box with smaller pieces of cardboard to make a makeshift container for such items. Remember, pets and children are curious. Store paint tubes, solvents, brushes, paint palettes and canvases out of sight. Consider placing items such as these higher or completely away from levels where low walkers tend to be, such as a high shelf, outside, or in a room with little to no activity. Store oil painted surfaces outside of living spaces to avoid generating fumes. Oil paint itself is not toxic unless one is using any cadmiums, lead white, or cobalt. The paint itself does not emit toxic odors. However, many of the mediums, liquid brush cleaners, dryers, and varnishes do give off hazardous VOCs. Keep flammable items in a plastic bin or cardboard box lined with plastic to soak up leaks and spills. Keep this box outside, in a garage, or near an area where it has access to air. Do not store flammable items, paints, canvases, or rags near fireplaces, radiators, or sources of ignition. Keep paint tubes stored in a tightly sealed box or bag to avoid drying out. Fluctuations in temperature can wreak havoc on art materials. Store brushes upright in a jar, flat in a tray or plastic art bin as to not damage brush tips. Clean oil-soaked brushes with solvent-free materials such as olive oil, Murphy's liquid soap, baby oil, dishwashing liquid, regular soap, or pre-made soap cakes sold at most art supply stores. Store liquids in original containers. If this is not possible and secondary containment is required, avoid using food containers for material storage. Some materials will break down plastics, therefore causing spills. Use similar storage material if possible, or glass jars with a lid. Keep lids closed when not in use. Ensure liquids are stored with a properly sealed lid to avoid dusts, liquids, or vapors from escaping. Hand protection is crucial in preventing the largest organ of your body from undergoing toxic effects of hazardous materials. Hands unprotected from solvents used in painting materials can lead to intensive drying of the skin, irritation, skin pigment changes, corrosion or burning, and potentially skin cancer. Think of your skin as a giant sponge. Chemicals that enter your body through the skin can be easily absorbed into the bloodstream, causing damage to the liver, kidney, bladder, brain, immune and reproductive systems. It is important to assess the risks for the materials one is working with and select a glove that provides specialized protection. Choose disposable nitrile gloves when handling solvent-based materials or any material labeled as flammable. Check the label of the material or associated safety data sheets for full disclosure. Keep in mind that latex and polyethylene gloves will deteriorate when in contact with solvents. These types of gloves are for water-based materials only. Wash your hands thoroughly after working and especially before eating, drinking, or touching your face. And remember, when selecting paint, choose cadmium hues over cadmium pigments, which are toxic and contain heavy metals that can be absorbed through the skins. Keep in mind that cadmiums are found in oils, acrylics, and watercolor paints. To protect your lungs, 
Wear an N95 disposable respirator when sanding canvases or gessoed surfaces. Ensure the nose clasp is pinched tight across the top of the nose piece. Beards and facial hair will prevent the N95 mask from a proper seal. All sanding activities should be done outside and brushed off thoroughly before being brought back inside. It is never recommended to hand or mechanically sand dried paint. Tiny paint particulates from sanding paint can settle deep into your lungs, causing long-term damage to one's respiratory system. Keep in mind, particulate masks do not provide protection against chemical vapors or gases. When setting up a workspace that is not intended for hazardous materials handling, it is crucial to determine how proper ventilation can be implemented to keep you and anyone in the space safe from toxic materials. It is important to note that studio air should be replaced six to 10 times per hour. Therefore, if you have zero oxygen exchange, you are putting your and your family's health at risk. Short-term exposure of chemical inhalation of solvents, varnishes, and other VOCs can lead to headaches, nausea, fatigue, loss of coordination, and many other possible side effects. Continued exposure to solvents can also cause blindness, harm the liver and kidneys, increase risk for irregular heartbeats, and affect the nervous system. Some solvents have also been identified as carcinogens, and research from the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences has recently linked solvent exposure to breast cancer. If you are using oil-based or acrylic-based media, work as close as you can to an open window or door. Open as many windows as possible in the area to create a channel for clean air to come in and bad air to escape. That being said, consider placing a fan near your workspace facing the opposite direction of your work to draw any fumes away from your workspace and your direct respiratory system. Do not place the fan in front of you and your work and blow the fumes directly towards yourself. Remember, think about exchanging the air in your workspace six to 10 times per hour. Minimize the amounts of hazardous materials that you use. Use only small amounts at a time and reserve larger amounts in storage with a lid on. Buy, use, and store chemicals wisely. Read the product label and box carefully. When possible, Choose the safest materials available and substitute if you can. Product manufacturers are required to label their products with their user's safety in mind. A danger label is reserved for products that have serious health or safety hazards associated with them, such as being highly toxic, corrosive, or flammable. Warning and caution labels are used on less hazardous substances. When cleaning up any material, ensure that only water-based items go down sink drains. Do not pour contaminated wastewater or flammable liquids into storm drains. Regardless if they are oil, acrylic, or water-based, never dump glues, inks, paints, oils, or mediums down sink drains. Materials such as these should be dried out to evaporate in an outdoor or well-ventilated area first and then disposed of in the garbage. Watercolor paint can dry out on the palette and be re-wet during the next session for use. Any watercolor waste can also be cleaned up with paper towels and thrown away. Brushes are cleaned with water and stored upright or flat to dry. Unwanted acrylic paint can dry out on a palette and be razor scraped off into the garbage when dry. Wet paint can be wiped off the, of the palette with a paper towel and thrown away. Palettes are cleaned with soap and water. Brushes are cleaned by wiping all wet paint off the brush first. Follow with rinsing brushes with hot soapy water and store upright or flat. Ensure all tubes are closed tightly before leaving the studio. 
oil-based paint can dry out on pallets and be razor scraped off into the garbage when completely dry. Unwanted wet paint can be scraped off into a disposable cup or bucket. This container can be used until it is filled. Let it completely dry and then throw it away or bring to the King County Hazardous Waste site. Paint still in use should be covered up with clear plastic wrap so it does not dry out. Cover and seal so pets and other curious creatures do not investigate. Brushes containing oil-based paint are cleaned off by wiping all wet paint off of a brush first with a towel or rag. Follow with rinsing the brushes with a natural brush cleaner, oil, or hot soapy water. Store brushes upright or lay flat to dry. Lastly, ensure all paint tubes and mediums are closed tightly before cleaning up. Do not dispose sharp items such as razor, exacto blades, pins, needles, broken glass or mirrors directly into garbage cans. Smaller sharp items for disposable can be wrapped with tape and placed into the garbage. Broken glass or mirrors should be taken immediately to dumpsters and or placed into boxes or paper bags before going into garbage cans. Spontaneous combustion occurs when a surface such as a rag, crumpled paper, or a piece of canvas is slowly heated to its ignition point through oxidation. If this heat has no way to escape, such as in a pile, the temperature will raise to a level high enough to ignite the oil and ignite the surface it is on. If you are using rags for cleanup of combustible materials, which is anything containing linseed oil, oil-based paint or inks, you will need to take extra measures in order to prevent spontaneous combustion. Dirty rags or paper towels used for cleanup should never be stored in a pile or left crumpled up in the garbage. Once the rags or paper towels are used, they should be left to dry by being spread out so they have access to oxygen. Some other options are to pin the rags to a wall, make a clothesline outside or in a garage, lay oil-soaked rags flat on a chair or stool, hang in a tree or nail to the exterior of a building, or lay flat on a sidewalk or driveway. In this case, you may need to pin them down with a rock to prevent them from blowing away. Oil-soaked rags can also be plunged into a bucket of water mixed with liquid detergent for storage or disposal. In a large plastic bucket, mix one gallon of water and one tablespoon of liquid detergent. At the end of your work session, plunge all dirty rags into the bucket for overnight storage and cleaning. Cover with a lid to prevent spills or animals from drinking. Wring the rags out after several hours and let air dry for reuse or throw them away. This water and soap mixture can be reused many times over. The mixture can be left to eventually evaporate or you can bring it to the King County Hazardous Waste Site, which is a free disposal site for unwanted hazardous materials. Working safely and responsibly with art materials is something that you as an artist are now charged with. The awareness of some of the health hazards and risks associated with the profession of being a maker is what will keep you in this game for the long run. Implementing the presented guidelines for working at home can and will be life-changing. Thanks for watching.